What's up everyone? So today I'm down at Audi Greenville and behind me is a 2019 Audi RS5. Huge thanks to them for providing this vehicle for me today. I'll have a link to their website down in the description below. The model that we're looking at today is the Sportback finished off in glacier white metallic and has an MSRP just under $88,000. Under the hood is a twin turbo 2.9 liter V6. This is only paired to the 8 speed Tiptronic automatic transmission with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. This engine produces 444 horsepower at 5700 RPM and 443 pound feet of torque as low as 1900 RPM. It has the Quattro all wheel drive system, weighs around 4000 pounds. 0 to 60 can happen in 3.9 seconds and 0 to 109 seconds with the dynamic package that increases the top speed to 174 miles an hour and with a fuel capacity of 15.3 gallons you can expect the MPG to be 17 in the city and 24 on the highway. The wheelbase measures 111.2 inches. It has an overall length of 188.3 the width is 79.9 and it has a height of 54.6 inches. Starting up front with the RS style honeycomb mesh grille that has a nice hexagonal shape to it. There's a forward facing camera with two sensors in the grille and four on each side of the bumper itself and Quattro is nicely written out in the lower section of the grille. This comes standard with LED headlights. The daytime running lights are integrated with the turn signal as well giving it a really nice look. There's two forward facing sensors on each side in the RS style air inlets. More piano black running along the lower section of the bumper and there are very clean lines coming down the hood. Moving to the side this comes with 20 inch 5 arm forged wheels with a nice two tone design. As part of the dynamic package this offers red calipers and the optional 15.7 inch carbon ceramic front brakes with 6 piston calipers and 13 inch rotors with 4 piston calipers in the rear. It also comes with the RS sport suspension with different driving modes. The gloss black side mirrors are power folding, they're heated and feature the integrated turn signal. There's more gloss black in the lower side skirt, very sharp lines running down the length of the door leading to the steeply raked roof giving this an excellent side profile. And finishing up in the rear with the trunk lip spoiler finished off in more gloss black. This has a power lift gate, backup camera with six parking sensors. The 3D looking LED taillights also feature a very cool looking turn signal. This has more gloss black in the lower diffuser along with the RS sport specific exhaust finished off with gloss black tips. There's fog lights just above those and very clean lines to finish up the rear of this vehicle. So that finishes up the exterior walk around on the 2019 RS5 Sportback. What do you guys think of this car so far? It's pretty much fully loaded. It has the black optic package, so that gives it all of the gloss black trim pieces. You get the 20 inch wheels that also have gloss black. And then it does have the dynamic package, which gives it the suspension, the exhaust, you have the red brake calipers, and it increases that top speed to 174. I was able to check out the 2018 S5 when they first hit the States and I thought that was a pretty cool car. But just having more of these features on it just gives it a completely different look. I love the white with the wheel color. It gives it a really good contrast. So now with the key, we can go ahead and check out the interior. There's unlock, lock, and you can double tap on this button to open up the hatchback there. But with the key on me, I'll just place my hand on the door handle and you will hear it automatically unlock. The door panel is finished off in very nice black leather on the armrest along with red stitching. There's suede above that. All of the side window controls are automatic up and down with your side mirror adjustments for the power folding and the heated option. This has a nice carbon fiber trim piece under the aluminum release handle with lock and unlock and two seat adjustments. This features a 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. You have the trunk release along with a little bit of storage space. Moving inside now to the black Napa leather seats. RS is embroidered in the top section. This has red stitching running along each bolster along with a hexagonal pattern running down the middle. They also feature the massaging setting. They have eight-way power adjustability with four-way power lumbar support. You can manually adjust the front of the seat, moving that forwards and backwards. RS5 is down on the door sill as well. Also, when you open up the door, it will display Audi Sport from coming underneath, so that is pretty cool to see. Once inside, we're greeted with a fully wrapped black leather steering wheel. There's more red stitching running along the inside. 
It has a nice flat bottom design to it with an RS badge. All of the buttons on the right control navigation along with your Bluetooth, volume, and settings for the radio. This is a favorites button that you can set anything that you would like. To the left, all of these will control the 12.3 inch digital cockpit. This also comes with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters finished off in a combination of gloss black and aluminum. So now using those buttons, you can see right in the center, I have the tack pulled up. You have the speedometer and gear selection in the center of that. Power and torque is to the far right and navigation is pulled up on the far left. You can scroll through a couple different options here and we can look at the trip computer, your sport displays like the G meter you just saw. There's lap times and lap statistics along with a layout feature. We're looking at the G-force meter again and tire pressure that's in that one setting. And then going over to the right, we can look at the radio along with any notes and back to the navigation screen. You can also change the view of this. So just by clicking on the view button, now we have the navigation and all of those settings that I just went over right in the center along with your tack to the left. You can also change the layout that you would like to see. The previous one you saw was sport. Now in classic mode, you will see that with the navigation, you still have that full screen and hitting view. You have your tack and speedometer even larger on both sides. To the far left is the engine temperature. You have your fuel gauge on the right. There's also a boost meter along with the temperature and clock on the bottom. To the left of the steering wheel is the cruise control stock. There's a storage pocket here that I can fit pretty much my whole arm in. So it's very deep for anything that you need to store to the side there. More carbon fiber along with the heads up display control and the headlights. There's one air vent. And then moving to the center is the 8.3 inch navigation screen. So it's very easy to control the center screen. We're gonna use all of these down below. You have presets on the top along with navigation and telephone to the left, radio and media on the right side. There's a menu and back button in the middle and then in the back is the rotary dial. You can click on that as well in order to go into what you wanna select. So looking at the menu, we'll go into vehicle. You have the different driving modes. You can also look at sound, radio, media. You have your Bluetooth, navigation and map. You also have Audi Connect along with the smartphone interface and multiple settings that you can go through. So your date and time, you have your brightness. Beneath that, you have two air vents along with a carbon fiber trim piece running the length of the dash. On the left side is the heated seat control for the driver. You have the temperature and automatic on this dial along with recirc buttons next to that. All the toggle switches in the middle are finished off in aluminum and have a nice click to them. You can see fan speed is in the center. You have AC on and off next to that along with where you'd like the air to go. This has a three zone climate control setup so you can adjust the rear from the front here just by going on that and being able to control that. You can go back to the front again and then sync everything together and you have where you'd like the air to go for the back seats. More recirc valves to the far right along with the heated passenger seat. Beneath that you have the engine start stop button along with a USB and 12 volt and a little bit of storage space in front of two cup holders with more carbon fiber running down the right side. Moving to the leather wrap shifter now, you just push on the trigger on the far left. We can push it all the way up into reverse. You'll see the backup camera light up. This does feature a 360 degree camera again. Using the rotary dial in front of the shifter, we can go through a couple different settings here. Looking at the rear camera, you have corner views out of the rear. There's the top down again, you have a front facing camera, and then a front corner view. So it's very easy to use all of these. And putting the car into drive now, you will see both of the cameras working simultaneously. And when you turn the wheel, the lines on the screen will move as well. Putting the rear corner view on, it gives you pretty much a wide angle. So when you're backing up, you have a lot of visibility. Putting the vehicle into drive now, you just pull on that trigger, go all the way back. You can put it into the right for sport mode, and then we can pop it into the center, push P on the back, and that will automatically put it into park. There's the electronic parking brake behind that. A Little bit of storage to the right side. You have a power and volume for the radio. There's also a little more storage space in front of the leather wrapped center console. We can pull that up. You have a USB in the back side along with a wireless charging port. Moving to the glove box now, there's definitely a lot of room along with a CD player in the top section. We'll take another look at these beautiful black leather seats. I really like the design running down the middle of them. And this also features a sunroof. All of those controls are up in the middle. You have your sunshade and your tilt to be able to open it up along with the touch sensitive dome lights. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the rear seating and the door panel has more carbon fiber along with the black leather and red stitching, gives it a really nice look. This is a five seater, so let's go ahead and hop in. Behind both front seats you have this net here for extra storage space. There's two air vents in the center along with the third zone for the back seat passenger, so being able to adjust the temperature. Two USBs and a 12 volt are down below that. As far as legroom goes, I have the front seat set at my height, 510. I definitely have plenty of legroom if I have about an inch above my head. So it's pretty comfortable, I don't have to slouch down or anything like that. Moving to this center armrest now, there's a little bit of storage space in the back side and then there's two cup holders that you can reveal. The hexagonal shape pattern with the red stitching continues to the back seats. They are very comfortable. This is the view out of the rear glass. You have a little side glass behind your normal windows. These seats also offer a 60-40 split to them, so just by pulling on this button on the driver's side back seat here, we can go ahead and fold that down, and you can see you have plenty of room into the back seats. Now it's time to go ahead and take a look at the rear storage space. You can either push the button on the key fob inside on the door panel, or just pull on the button up underneath the Audi logo. Obviously you have plenty of room even with the back seats up for anything that you need. This is a removable cover here, so you just pop it out on both sides and you can put through anything that you want. There's no overhangs, which is nice to see. On the right side, you have a net with a little storage compartment. There's a strap here along with a tool kit. And then on the left side, there's another net. Couple tie downs on the bottom too. And then up top, we can just push on the button to automatically close it up. All right, so getting the RS5 Sportback out on the road now, I really like the interior. Everything is so premium feeling. The steering wheel has great notches on it. It's really like a sport designed steering wheel. It has really good hand positioning and the flat bottom design gives it a really nice look. Let's go ahead and put it into manual mode and give it a little bit of power. Whew. And taking a turn here, wow, it handles incredibly well. The engine that this has is a little bit smaller than the S5 that I drove. That was a turbocharged three liter V6. So again, this is the 2.9 liter twin turbo, and it cranks out about 100 horsepower more than the S5 did. It sounds good too, it's not too loud. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, there was a little bit of lag there. I'm not putting my foot all the way down, of course, so it, I'm gonna expect a little bit of lag, but even with that, it, it definitely gets up and moves. Talking about the different driving modes right now, as I showed you guys earlier, all Audis basically come with those four. I have it in dynamic right now, and I can definitely feel these bumps in the road. I'm gonna go ahead and put it into comfort now, and that definitely lightens up a bit. All the bumps suddenly just go away, and the steering is a little bit softer when you put it all the way back into dynamic mode now. The bumps are now back, the steering gets a little bit tighter. This also has the optional dynamic steering. So basically what that means is, since this vehicle is all wheel drive, when you take it around a turn, the outside wheel is gonna spin faster than the inside wheel. So that's gonna help eliminate any understeer or torque steer or anything like that. So coming around this turn here. Oh, wow, it handles it so well. Moving on to visibility now, it's really easy to see all around this car. Looking out of that back glass, even though it's steeply raked from the outside, you have, ooh, the pops in that exhaust sounds so good. You have a clear view out of that rear glass and then looking over your left and right shoulder, you can easily see in both directions. But this has the 360 degree camera again, as I showed you. It's very nice to use. I really like the graphics on it. Everything is crystal clear. Moving on to the overall comfort of this car now. I went over all the suspension and how you can change that. But as far as these seats go, they have great bolstering support to them. They're hugging me pretty well on both sides right now. So it is a comfortable seat. You have a lot of different adjustments that you can do. One thing that I didn't show you guys yet is the massaging feature. I just remembered that. When you push on the button on the left side, it will pull up a screen. You have wave, stretch, and knead. And then moving these four buttons on the front side of the side of the seat, you can control between those. And then you can also go into each one and control where you want that massaging feature to happen. And you can put it on what setting you want to. All right, so we're gonna give it a little bit more gas here again. Wow, 
Well, those shifts are very instant. Ooh. Again, that exhaust, <laughs> it's not crazy loud. It's very well insulated on the inside here. But if you get on it just a little bit, you can definitely hear it. It's not a low rumble or anything, but you can hear the little pops and crackles in it. So it, it definitely sounds good. also has a lot of standard safety features that I haven't mentioned yet, including lane departure, distance pacing, you have blind spot, the adaptive cruise, there's a park steering assist, and the forward collision. Moving on again to the interior materials, I know I mentioned that earlier, but everything is so premium feeling. Carbon fiber is everywhere. There's even leather and red stitching on the inside of my a right leg here which I didn't mention earlier. You have leather and carbon fiber on the door panel and then the rear seats have so much attention to detail to them also just like you're in the front seats. All right we're gonna do another acceleration from first gear and going around a turn. Woo. I can't get over how well this handles for the sportback hatchback design that it has. It's definitely something you could take out on back roads if you wanted to. It has the handling and the performance. So it's not just a daily driver, it's something that you could have fun with. Put it into dynamic mode, tighten up the steering, and uh, you have a, a pretty fun luxury and sports car at the same time. So I think that about sums up my test drive and day with the 2019 Audi RS5 Sportback. Huge thanks again to Audi Greenville for providing this vehicle for me today. I will have a link to their website down in the description below. I can't find anything to pick apart in this car. The driving experience is phenomenal. I love everything on the inside again. That exhaust sounds really nice. You have tons of storage space. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next video.